Hey, Larkin Rose here. Another complaint I hear every now and then about the idea of a free society is people pointing out distasteful or less than ideal economic trades, economic transactions, and saying, this is what would happen in Ancapistan, this is what capitalism leads to, or free trade, or uh, whatever, whatever label they want to stick on it. Um, and they'll bring up things like uh, child labor, or people working all day for a dollar, or people selling their kidneys, or um, and somebody just, uh, actually somebody asked me to do a video on the topic because they brought up an article, um, some news story in the, the UK about some people are offering like sex for rent, like people are advertising, I have a room for rent in exchange for sexual favors. And whether it's true or not, I don't even know. Like, the story was even sort of vague. But people will point to that and go, see, that's what would happen in, in Capistan. It's horrible. How can you tolerate such a thing? Um, and so there's, a, as usual, there's a bunch of mushy-headed mistakes built into their complaint. Um, first of all, there's this weird assumption that if not for free trade and capitalism, there would just be an infinite amount of free stuff and nobody would ever have to work really hard or sacrifice or do some, you know, kind of gross trade to get by because people would just magically have free stuff. Um, yeah, socialism doesn't really turn out that way. Uh, what it has turned out as, um, in more than one occasion, is lots of dead people who don't have anything. But so there's a few steps involved in, in pointing out the, because there's a few layers of, of stuff they're getting wrong about that. First of all, if they say this sort of thing would be allowed in Ancapistan or in a free society, um, they're right. Like, if somebody says, I have a room for rent, I don't particularly need money, but I'll rent it for sexual favors. First of all, to me, that person's sort of gross and yucky, and I would caution anybody against taking them up on the deal. And anybody who took the deal, I would think, oh, that's like either you already have problems or you probably will have problems, and that's unfortunate, and that's not going to be a healthy situation, probably. Um, if I was going to be flipping, I'd say, wait, room in exchange for sex? Uh, isn't that called marriage? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but it would happen. The thing is, when people are saying, if we allow this to happen, well, what's the alternative? What you're proposing, if you're, not a pro if you're not proposing allowing that, even if you find it distasteful and gross and, and unhealthy, whatever, if you're not allowing it, what you're actually saying is, because I'm so righteous and caring, I'm going to go to these two people who are going to make a voluntary exchange, and I'm going to forcibly stop it from happening. Like the person who actually wants to trade sexual favors for a room for rent, Nope, I'm going to, for their own good, I'm going to violently interfere. And that brings us to another step in what they get wrong. In situations where somebody is making a, a trade that's obviously less than ideal, you know, child labor, you know, little 10-year-olds working in a factory for 10 hours a day, they miss the fact that they're probably doing that because in their current situation, they don't have a better option. And for much of human history, or history of any animal species, lots of it involves lots of them starving to death. And so survival for a very long time was a huge challenge and not at all guaranteed. You know, the, the, the expected age at which you're going to kick the bucket was nowhere near what it is now. And so many people died when they were really young. So it's easy to look from our current position of comfort and go, that should never exist. Let's go forcibly interfere. Like, how do you think that helps? If somebody is, is in such a situation that they would, whether it's child labor or somebody saying, yeah, I'll work, you know, eight hours a day or 10 hours a day, hard labor for $2. Like, okay, that sucks. That's sad that somebody's in that position. How do you think you're helping them by going in and saying, nope, I'm not going to let you even get those $2. I'm going to interfere with you even getting those $2 when you obviously didn't see a better alternative or you would have chosen a better alternative. So I'm going to take your best alternative and from my first world, you know, privileged station, 
I'm going to demonstrate my compassion by violently interfering with the best option that you thought you had and making it so you don't even have that. And then I can feel self-righteous and virtuous as you starve to death because you couldn't have anything better. Now, often, in fact, damn near always these days, those situations are directly the result of government coercion stopping people from having better options. And when the situation is a result of government coercion, keeping people from doing something better, whether it's by taxes and regulation, you know, destroying business, or by government just grabbing all the resources and saying, now you have to work for this corporation, this mine, this whatever the company is, because we made it so they're the only ones who own anything, they're the only opportunity around, the government coercion is the bad part. Now, if there's a corporation company using that government coercion to do that, that's bad too. Like if they're trying to make that happen, that's bad too. The bad thing is not making the offer. It's not making the offer even for something you find distasteful or unfair or you know whatever arbitrary thing you want to stick on it. If somebody says you can rent a room for sex, okay, like that's gross, that's ewy, and both sides have the right to make that deal if that's the deal they want to make, and you advocating violent interference with that is not doing either one of them a favor. And it's not you being compassionate, and it's not you enriching anybody. And that's the, the, the silly notion is the idea that, well, by way of government coercion, it'll magically make people rich so they don't have to do these deals. And it does the exact opposite. And I could go into a, a rant about the minimum wage and how it's, you know, it doesn't make people pay more. It just forcibly interferes with any arrangement in which this person was going to do a deal with that person for this dollar amount. It doesn't make that guy pay more because that guy has the option to go, I can't afford you, you're fired, which happens all over the place when the minimum wage goes up or when it's put in place at all. And like, well, we're being compassionate because we're violently interfering with the deal that the person wanted to take because in his current situation, that was the best he could find. And it's true even when it's something yucky or unhealthy or anything like that. Child labor, the person trading sex for a place to live. Um, and so this, this holier-than-thou notion that my philosophy would never tolerate that, all you're saying is I would violently interfere with those two people, two adults making a voluntary trade just because I said think it's sort of yucky. That makes you the intruding violent twit. That makes you the primary problem. You're a bigger problem than the sort of yucky freedom that they were going to engage in. And, but for people to point out just the, the things that reality leads to, and specifically government leads to, which is, you know, you have to do something to produce food and shelter. People have to do, have to exert energy to produce food and shelter for themselves, for others. And it happens that specialization and trading with each other makes us way, way, way better as a species at surviving without, you know, starving to death by the millions. And yes, a, a free system in a free society will allow for exchanges you don't particularly like. It'll allow somebody to say, you know, I don't have any skills and I do, you know, whatever. I'm going to sell one of my kidneys for $50,000 to somebody who needs it. It's your freaking kidney. You have the right to sell it. I think it's pretty sad if someone's in a state where that's their best option. But if that's their best option, don't violently interfere with it. It's their freaking kidney. They have the right to sell their freaking kidney. And if you find that unpleasant, the one moral thing you can do to stop it is give them a better deal. Uh, you don't have to sell your kidney for $50,000. i will like, give you a job or something. Adding violence to the equation isn't making you compassionate, and it's not giving them another option. It's just taking one of their options away. So if somebody actually thinks their best option is trade sex for a place to live in the UK, that's pretty sad. If you're not offering them a better option, then just shut up. Don't violently interfere and then pretend that that's virtuous somehow, because it's not. Um, but the last thing I want to point out is that the, there's this, and this, this is a, a leftover. This is residue from the authoritarian notion that 
bad should be illegal and good should be legal. I mean, people do that with all sorts of stuff. Like, drug use is bad for you, so we should make it illegal. And this is bad, so we should make it illegal. And that's good, so it should be perfectly legal. And people have those two concepts so mixed in their heads that they project it onto others. And so if somebody like me says, no, you don't have the, the right to forcibly interfere with somebody who wants to trade sex for a place to stay, they decide that that means I must like that arrangement. I must think it's perfectly fine. And they'll actually talk that way. Oh, so I guess you think it's perfectly fine for somebody to work this mirror, sell their kidney, or trade sex for a place to live. No, I think it's really sad and unfortunate. The fact that I don't violently interfere with it doesn't mean I approve of it. It doesn't mean I think it's ideal. And the last thing I want to cover is the thing that makes it so people don't have to frickin' do that is freedom. Freedom is what creates enough prosperity that people aren't that frickin' desperate. And if you look around the world at, at, at the places where you know, the companies go to, to hire people for a dollar a day. Why is it that way? Because of the friggin' governments. And sometimes it's, like I said, it's the governments at the behest of the big corporations stealing the resources and, and squashing competition and trapping people in a situation where that's their only option. And that's nasty. If you're using coercion to make that be somebody's best option, you're the bad guy. If it already is somebody's best option and you're just offering them another option, that's not evil. Even if it's sort of gross and yucky and other people don't like it, even if I don't like it, I don't have the right to forcibly interfere with that. But the, the notion that freedom is the problem because if there's a free society, some people might do that yucky thing. The, the final reason that's just so stupid is that a free society, the freer society is, the more prosperous it's going to be, and then people won't be in a situation where they need to do something that desperate, where they need to sell a kidney, where they need to trade sex for a place to live, where they need to work 10 hours a day in a factory when they're 10 years old or something. They won't need to do that because of the overall prosperity, which makes all of us able to help each other. And in the US, the very relative freedom, we have nothing even close to a free market here and haven't for ages and ages and ages. Well, we haven't ever had a real free market here, um, but it's gotten less and less free over the decades as more and more regulations and taxes hit everything. But even with all those anchors tied to it, the relative economic freedom has made the American people so freaking rich that first of all, nobody starves here. Nobody starves to death in the US which is a freaking miracle. I mean, if we're used to it and that's all you've seen all your life, you go, well, whoopee do, that's an easy accomplishment. No, it's freaking not. You look at the history of humanity, starvation was all over the freaking place, and it isn't right here because of the prosperity of that relative freedom. And on top of that, that prosperity has allowed Americans, after being robbed by the state, after being controlled and regulated and taxed and all this crap, after all that, they still give billions of dollars to charity, giving stuff to people for free because, oh, that person needs help. Here's some help. That is what freedom allows. Whereas socialism creates poverty and, you know, often mass death because it destroys the prosperity. So to complain about the freedom that allows for the prosperity that makes it so people don't have to do that sort of stuff, so now people can whine about, I should make $15 an hour for going like this. Do you have any idea how ridiculously luxurious and spoiled an American burger flipper is compared to most of the people in the world throughout most of history? Do you have any freaking clue how easy a life they have? What a pathetically small amount of work. What a pathetically small risk to their life and their safety it is to do that job, that, you know, menial a task, compared to most of history and most of the world. And it's the prosperity that'll, that got us to the point where now we can bitch about that level of hardship of, oh, I go like this and I'm only making $12 an hour. Like, holy smokes, you know how much of the world would be like, what is, how can you possibly complain about that? Including here a couple hundred years ago. If you, 
could explain to them the equivalent of what they'd be making for the work they'd be doing, and they'd go, what, you're complaining about that? We have to work in the field since from before the sun comes up to after it goes down so you don't freaking starve to death. And you're bitching about the fact that you can't buy f new shiny sneakers every two months when you go like this for a few hours a day. And so it's the prosperity that, that, that more and more, the prosperity resulting from relative freedom, that more and more takes people to a place where they don't have to do the, the uh, unpleasant trades. And now the unpleasant jobs pay tons of money because otherwise you can't get people to do them. And so to complain about freedom, to point to examples of voluntary exchange that are sort of yucky and unfortunate and say the problem with this is definitely freedom and the solution is violently stopping them from making that deal is just to misunderstand everything about economics and wealth and human nature and freedom and self-ownership and everything. Basically to point to, to some situations and say that's not ideal, therefore let's have a violent you know, parasitic ruling class making that not happen. It's just so ignorant and so stupid, especially given the hundreds of years of experience of what that actually leads to. And then if you look at the poverty and the, you know, in the Soviet Union, the stories of people literally selling their children as food, you can't get worse than that. And that is what socialism has caused. And that is the result of coercion and violence, not freedom. And so it's, it's so weird to me that people will still find occasional voluntary exchanges and say, Ew, that's yucky, and that shows why we can't have freedom. I mean, they won't phrase it that way, but they'll talk about, oh, and Capistan and this anarcho-capitalism leads to these horrible injustices. And it's the exact other way around. That the more economic freedom there is, the richer we get, and the less people have to do the unpleasant stuff. I mean, look how many people today aren't doing anything. They're sitting around on their butts playing video games, and they're taken care of by somebody else to a degree that I don't even think that's healthy. Like the, the number of people who have no skills and no talent and no incentive to go do anything useful because they're taken care of, that's not psychologically healthy. And yet people, and, and I totally admit that that's a result of freedom. We got so prosperous that we can be lazy and unhealthy, worthless twits, you know, a bunch of us, which is sad. And then you need some other incentive to get off your butt and do something with your friggin' life. Uh, but to point at these, these, you know, distasteful, less than ideal situations and then declare that freedom is the problem is just so stupid. And to declare that violence is the answer is just so stupid. And if you're going to complain about a situation like that, oh, this is horrible, they're trading room and board for sex, then go build or buy a freaking apartment building and give that person a better deal. And if you're not offering them a better deal, shut up. You're not adding anything to the equation by cheering for government to violently interfere. You're just being a little holier than thou, ignorant, problem, feeling good about yourself. And that's not how society advances. Society advances by freedom to get away from the distasteful stuff as fast and efficiently as we possibly can. And freedom is and has always been the best way to do that.